Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. discussing about the general orbit perturbation theory. So, in that context we, uh, we are looking into the Langrange bracket and uh, its properties. Uh, so, last time we have looked into the three properties of the Langrange bracket. Now, today we will uh, start with evaluation of the Langrange bracket because for solving the orbit perturbation theory this must be evaluated so that the rate of the uh, change, rate of change of orbital parameters that equation we can get. Okay, if we get the equation, so from there what will be the future value of the orbital parameter it can be calculated. Okay, so let us start. This is our x, y and z inertial axis. And we have got the orbit here. n prime n as in our earlier discussion of the two body problem we have derived the orbital parameters and in that context we have looked into this orbit so it is a the same thing not different. This angle is 90 degree. Okay, this is the project projection. The dotted line is the projection of the orbit in the xy plane. And then we define the line of periapsis, okay, which we indicate by let us we periapsis we indicate by P and this one will indicate by M. This will write by m because earlier also we have written using m. And perpendicular from this point to this point uh, on the orbit projection, this is your m prime. And if we join the line here from this point to this point, so this is projection of the line. So, O m prime is the projection of O m on the x y plane. Now, here we start working with what we need to do. So, in this direction we define xi as a 
unit vector here in this direction. We take one reference frame. So, uh, this is the power peri, green one is the periapsis line. So, in that direction, the unit vector we take as the xi cap and perpendicular to this in the orbital plane, we take unit vector in this direction the unit vector will be eta cap. So, this is our xi direction and this is eta direction okay. and this angle we know this is i, this angle is i angle of inclination. We have not drawn the orbit normal yet. And let us say that the orbit normal we indicate by uh, so we show the orbit normal along this direction. This is the orbit normal. To make it little uh, more convenient, what we will do that uh, to make it little better, let us make this as uh, unit vector here in this direction as p cap and unit ve vector along the eta direction as q cap in this direction as q cap ok. So, if we SF, uh, that will make it uh, little better um, to work with. Okay. So, the, this is the configuration now the angle this is the small omega which is the true uh, the, uh, argument of Perizzi and somewhere the satellite may be located here in this position. So, satellite position we take along this direction, this is a satellite here. So, the angle from green line to this place, this is theta. This angle is 90 degree from blue line to the pink line this we use to show the 90 degree angle ok. Between these two green lines this one and this one the angle is 90 degree. So, what we have done here in this uh, orbital plane we have taken p cap and q cap as the reference lines like in your orbit if you remember if this is the focus. So, if I this orbit I show it like this. So, this becomes your p cap here in this direction and q cap here in this direction. This is your xi direction and this is the eta direction and this is your origin here in this place. So, this is exactly the pink line is shown here in this place. This is notation is being used. And along this direction, so uh, xi, eta, and here we uh, write as zeta. So, orbit normal will be perpendicular uh, to this orbit, this blue orbit which I cannot show here, uh, we can just show it like uh, see once we uh, in your 12th class or earlier you might have learned that if we show it like this. So, this indicates back side of the arrow 
and this indicates the front side of the arrow. So, if I indicate like this, so your z axis is coming outside. Now, we need to write the unit vectors p cap in terms of x, y and z and why we are doing this? Right now, it will not be visible to you, but there is certain purpose to this which will be visible toward the end what exactly we have done. Okay. So, what we are trying to do that we are trying to work with a, e and theta i a small omega and capital omega and a, e and theta uh, these are lying in the orbital plane. So, uh, therefore, they can be expressed in terms of iota and this is zeta and eta. Uh, this is xi and eta. In terms of xi and eta, we can uh, represent and uh, zeta is perpendicular to these two. Okay. So, this is equivalent to x and this is equivalent to y and zeta is equivalent to z. And by doing so, the problem will get little simplified. Okay. So, let us proceed and look into this Okay, so, p cap p cap we have to first write. So, p cap it consists of this vector p cap vector which is shown here in this place. This is a unit vector therefore, we it can be written in terms of i j and k. Okay. So, for defining this we need to break this O n uh, along the O n direction and the O m direction. Along the O n direction we will have the component cos omega using this angle and along the O m direction this will be sin omega. Thereafter, O n can be broken along the x and y direction. So, here we break it along the x and y direction this angle is capital omega. So, this becomes uh, along the x direction we write here first x maybe we can write here x. So, along the x direction we have cos small omega times cos capital omega and along the y direction cos omega times sin capital omega. So, this is along the o n direction then the other component which is along the o m direction this can be first broken along the o m prime and o z. So, this we break along the O z and uh, along the O m prime. So, we will have the component along this direction O z direction sin omega and uh, the angle is i. So, this becomes sin i and this one will becomes sin small omega this this type of analysis we have done earlier the from the figure it is a visible I need not uh, keep on explaining all these things. So, sin omega and cos i. So, component along the o m direction now component along the o m direction can be broken along the x and y direction. So, this exercise we have to do. So, z component remains as it is while the component O m it can be broken along the x and y direction. So, from here we have to break it along the x and y direction. So, this becomes O m prime. So, angle between the O x and 
or we simply we can write angle O angle M prime uh, see uh, here uh, it may be appearing that the O x and O m prime they are collinear, but this is not so this is because of the figure in this line if I draw it here in this place rather than so uh, immediately it will be visible that they are not the same thing. So, the angle O uh, x O x O m prime this angle is capital omega plus 90 degree and therefore, the along the O x direction this we get as so uh, cos capital omega plus 90 degree this will be minus sin capital omega and similarly sin capital omega plus 90 degree this will be cos capital omega. So, we use this information to write these values here. So, the component along O x then becomes this becomes sin small omega sin i times sin capital omega and this with a minus sign. So, minus sign we place here okay. and then the y component this becomes sin omega cos i times cos capital omega. So, this is the y component. Similar exercise we can do also for the uh, the q cap and therefore, p cap we can write as combining the x and y components x y and z separately. So, this becomes cos omega cos capital omega minus sin omega sin i times sin capital omega times i cap this because this is along the x direction and then plus along the y direction then we have cos omega times sin capital omega and plus sin omega cos i times cos capital omega times j cap okay. and finally, the z component which is sin omega sin i times k cap. So, this is how the p looks like. Oh, here so this is cos i. So, here this should be cos i. We have written here this is cos i sin omega cos i because we are breaking this part. So, this is cos i. So, we make it here cos i. These are some of the errors which keeps creeping in, but uh, I keep correcting all these things. Okay, so, if, uh, we have written p along the same line we can also uh, write the q cap. The q cap the unit vector along the eta direction this can also be written in the same way and uh, I will write the directly the values for that and you can check those values and this will be minus sign. small omega cos capital omega cos i times i cap
So, this is q cap and uh, along this direction along the zeta direction let us write the unit vector as r cap then the r cap can be written as sin capital omega sin i times i cap and we name them uh, let us say this is 1 this is 2 and 3 so we have got the unit vectors and therefore now we will express p cap as p1 times i cap plus p2 times j cap and p3 times k cap. Similarly, q cap we can write as q1 times i cap, q2 times j cap for briefing the notation and q3 times k cap. A set of equation 4 let a e and theta so instead of using this theta we write here in terms of t actually what we are interested in in the orbital parameters we are looking for variation of the orbital parameters so, theta is already a varying thing, but this is not of interest rather if you look into the mean anomaly. So, in the mean on anomaly we have written as the mean angular rate times t minus t. So, n t minus n capital T. So, this is the quantity minus n capital T or simply capital T this we are interested in. And this capital T it defines the time of perigee passes. If you remember that uh, while we have written r the ex expression for the r we have derived. So, this was 1 plus e cos theta minus theta 0 okay. or uh, later on this we wrote simply as 1 plus e cos phi. So, here theta 0 this is referring to the time of perigee passes. or which we are taking as the reference point this may be taken as the reference point even. So, we are not working with this right now we are working with this particular symbol we will be using it uh, and what we are going to do so if, uh, shortly if, uh, while we discuss so th these things will be clear, but the issue is that theta is already a function of time. So, this is varying okay. it will be varying in any orbit. But what is the specificity that in the true orbit the time of perigee passes this this is the line of periapsis ok this periapsis line also recedes. So, this is your theta here you are indicating this angle as theta and reckoning time at this time theta the true anomaly can also be represented in terms of t. So, uh, what is the time at this point the peri periapsis? So, this time we are representing as capital T. So, this is the quantity which is entering here in this place from where you are referring to uh, see here uh, in this place I will make the figure and explain.
So this is your theta position, okay, satellite position and somewhere here there is the periapsis, this is the y line, x line and this is the z line, this is the periapsis line. This angle we have taken as omega and this angle as theta. So, mean anomaly what this is referring to mean anomaly we are trying to measure from this theta is being converted in terms of represented in terms of mean anomaly which is purely a mathematical quantity. But if you remember in the integration the lower limit we have set to 0 and the upper limit to theta. If we do not set the lower limit to 0 then what happens? So, not setting the lower limit to 0, but rather than to theta 0, this gives rise to from where you are integrating it. Okay. So, that gives rise to this term. Okay. So, we will return back to uh, this particular uh, issue and I will explain you in some more details. Uh, but you should remember that the just at this instant that the mean anomaly we have written in terms of t minus capital T, where t is the time of the perigee passes or what we call the um, okay, this is the time of the perigee passes uh, and this we have represented as mean anomaly. So, here representing this t this is important because the theta is already it is a changing with time for any orbit this will change this is the true anomaly. So, we are interested in this value. And I will take up this issue uh, afterwards right now we should not worry about uh, this particular point. So, this is related to theta okay. and uh, these parameters I will represent as alpha 1 alpha 2 and alpha 3. And similarly, we will have the parameters capital omega, small omega and i and this will be represented by beta 1, beta 2 and beta 3. And it depends on the sequence you change, it is not necessary that i be represented by beta 3, it can be represented by beta 1. And if we use this, so we need to evaluate the Langrange bracket alpha r alpha s alpha r then beta s and beta r beta s. These are the Langrange brackets we need to evaluate and from where these are coming? This is the same thing as I have explained you earlier C j C k this is your Langrange bracket and then I also mentioned that I can break it in the four quadrants these brackets right in this four uh, these brackets then become the uh, elements of this 6 by 6 matrix. So, this one the first one let us say this is the A. So, A is referring to this part and uh, this one is referring to B. So, B is referring to this part and this becomes minus B and this is C which is referred to here in this place. That means, you have the A, E and T. So, A, E and T here and similarly, you will have capital omega, a small omega and I, capital omega, a small omega and I. So, you can see that the A just consist of alpha r and alpha s. A just consist of alpha r and alpha s that means, it will range over this means only over A, E and T. So, this is over A, E and T while this one if you look for this particular quadrant so of, uh, of the matrix. So, here you will see that this is a mixture of A, E and T and capital omega, small omega and i. So, this is therefore, mixed as alpha r and beta s. Similarly, this part uh, this is 
capital omega small omega i and this is mixed with a e and t and already we have shown that this is related to these two are related by a minus sign so b and minus b so these are the mixture and then the finally c so this is just capital omega small omega i capital omega small omega and i and therefore this is ranging over beta r and beta s so these are the lagrange brackets we need to evaluate so rather than writing in terms of right now at this stage in terms of e etc we generalize it in terms of alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 beta 1 beta 2 beta 3 so this is related to alpha and this is related to beta so this becomes alpha bit alpha alpha so this is also alpha okay so this becomes alpha alpha related to this becomes related to alpha beta and this will be related to beta beta and this is related to again alpha beta but with minus sign okay. so this is strategy we are going to follow here okay we are so alpha r and s so here r equal to 1 2 and 3 and s equal to 1 2 and 3 so what we have deduced instead of using the symbol that c1 c2 c3 c4 c5 c6 so this we are replacing replacing in terms of beta so this becomes beta 1 beta 2 and beta 3 so that our indexing it runs only over 1 to 3 Okay, rather than running over one uh, to six, and it's a convenient also because uh, in this uh, Langdon's bracket matrix, if we are forming, so here in this this part, this is B, so this is minus B, so I do not have to evaluate this, and thereafter also the diagonal elements are zero. Okay, so the, we get rid of that, and only the last time we have looked into that we need to evaluate three. Langdon's brackets here, three Langdon's brackets here. Uh, sorry, the three Langdon's brackets here in this place, and three here in this place, and in this we have to do nine. And the, here we do not have to do anything. So that means total we have to evaluate fifteen Langdon's brackets. and the, this is the strategy we are going to follow so therefore our r becomes x i cap y j cap and z k cap this we can write as so your r vector now going back to this place so here is your r vector this is your r vector so this r vector it can be represented in terms of x y and z components in the inertial frame or either in the orbital plane we can write in terms of eta component uh, this is xi component and eta component okay so this also we can express as xi times p cap and eta times q cap so this becomes a planar case here in this case while we deal in this manner and r dot this becomes x dot i cap y dot j cap and z dot k cap and this also we can write as xi dot p cap plus eta dot q cap and xi times p cap p cap dot q cap dot so this equation we will name as uh, equation number 5 now here we have to look 
in this particular expression in the oscillating orbit already we have discussed that r dot is representing the velocity and in the oscillating orbit before this uh, we uh, write this part p and q cap they stand for orbital parameters as is visible from you can look into p cap stands for orbital parameter all the orbital parameters are involved except the small theta here you can see that q cap is also involving small omega capital omega all these parameters and r cap also involves the orbital parameters okay. so uh, p cap and q cap they involve orbital parameters which are taken as or simply we can say that uh, p cap q cap are the unit vectors which are fixed in the plane of the orbit and therefore this quantity should vanish so we will have here xi times p cap dot plus eta times q cap dot this must be equal to 0 this equation we will name as equation number 6 ok which is very much uh, this is uh, visible that uh, r dot is the velocity of the uh, in the oscillating plane the r dot this velocity whatever we are taking so it is lying in the orbital plane ok and therefore this will be described only in terms of xi dot and eta dot not in terms of the uh, the variation of the p p cap dot and q cap dot will not come into picture ok so this is our equation number so what exactly we are doing we are proceeding in the same way as we have done earlier only difference is that we are now dealing with xi and eta ok so with this now uh, we are ready to work further one more thing we can write here p cap locates the perigee I hope this part uh, gets clear this is important to note that here while we are working with only this term will feature in the velocity of the satellite in the orbit we are taking this plane. 
So, in this plane we have here p cap and in this direction we have q cap and in this direction we are writing xi and this direction eta. So, this should appear the velocity in this orbit at any point it should appear only as a function of xi dot and eta dot not as a function of p, p dot and q dot and therefore, this part must be 0 okay. and we will discuss this issue in uh, uh, further in the coming lecture. Okay. So, therefore, alpha r and alpha s what we have written as a Langrange bracket we need to evaluate them okay. and what is our ultimate objective? Ultimate objective if you remember that it was something the c j comma c k times c dot k and on the right hand side we have minus dou r by dou c j. this we got from uh, writing del uh, minus del r dot uh, we had the other part do r by do c j. So, our ultimate objective is to get this quantity c dot k okay. for this we have to solve and for solving for that we need to do so much of work. So, if, uh, actually if, uh, this parameter variation method if we look uh, mathematically uh, this is the most complicated part and uh, time taking also. Uh, so, therefore, if, uh, I will not be able to completely cover this in our uh, lecture here. So, I will give you the short copy of the written material also to support the derivation in some places. Okay. So, this part at least uh, let us finish it quickly. So, this we are writing as j x plus j y plus j z equal to j this we have done earlier. And uh, if you remember this we also write as dou x y dou in terms of c j c k instead of writing this we are now writing alpha r and alpha s. So, we can write this as dou x by dou alpha r dou x dot by dou alpha s minus dou x by dou x dot by dou alpha r times dou x y dou alpha s and in the same way we can write for dou y for dou alpha r so on and for the z also we can write in the same way. So, this quantity in the shorter notation we can write this as dou x x dot and dou those who are familiar with the difference uh, partial differential. So, you know well how to represent this. Okay, and so each of this, this is a determinant. So, each of them it is a determinant. So, we have uh, what we have uh, okay, we will go into the next lecture we will uh, because this becomes longer. So, uh, 
we stop here and uh, we will go into the next one. Thank you very much.